I don't know how to transition out of that. Chris McGowan's here from the men's volleyball team. Chris, how's it going, man? Gentlemen, I'm doing well. How about you guys? We're good. Doing what, good. I want to get your opinion on this question. What's the next step for BYU to compete as a Power Five equivalent? Men's volleyball in a unique position. You're not. You're kind of in the SEC of volleyball there. <laughs> yeah, we yourself. are. You know, I, I think no matter what happens with with the school and conference alignment, I think we're always kind of, you know, set in terms of where we're at just with the MPSF and the quality of play in our conference. But, um, uh, you know, just from my perspective in the, in the conversations that I've had around the department and kind of what I've read, I think it's all about the financials, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, can BYU make a case for whatever conference that they would end up in that, uh, that they – help the conference financially because I think the competition is ultimately about how many resources you can bring to bear mm -hmm. um, in terms of athletic facilities, in terms of what you can give the student athletes and, uh, and all of those resources are, you know, mostly financially related. And so if, if you can make a case for, we can, we can bring a, an attractive financial package where we're a financial asset to the conference um, I think everything else kind of falls in line after that. But, uh, you know, <laughs> men's volleyball coaches aren't making those kind of <laughs> decisions. So it's, as they say, classically way above my pay grade here. Yeah. yeah. With, with, with you in recruiting, do you see that as a, as a deal breaker for kids? Um, you know, you can offer them to, to play one of the top conferences, but as far as the facilities and maybe some more, uh, some extra financial benefits, do you see the kids going one way or the other? Well, you know, we're uh, we're pretty unique. Our sport, I think, just we're we're at four and a half scholarships. And for how uh, many guys? Well, we've got twenty on our roster right now. And my philosophy is we're trying to get as many kids on scholarship as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll we'll cut that pro that pie up. A, you know, amongst uh, right now we've got nineteen of our twenty guys that are on scholarship wow, at one thanks. level or another. So you're going point one or two for yeah. A lot you of know, guys. and so some guys are getting books. You know, and uh, but I I just feel like it. You know, it changes the nature of your position on the team if you're a scholarship guy versus a walk-on guy. And even if your scholarship isn't substantial, you know, if it's just paying you a little bit, it changes the way you're treated within the department. It changes the way you kind of view yourself yep. as an athlete in the program. And, uh, and so we're trying to help um, as many guys as we can and, uh, and then, you know, reward the guys that are really helping us on the court with, uh, with more substantial uh, levels of scholarship. But, uh, you know, just... When we're out recruiting, um, I think the thing that we offer more than anything is just the overall experience. Our facilities are as nice as uh, as any schools in terms of you know locker rooms and just mm -hmm. you know with the with the fuel card that the athletes got this year, um, they love that you know the nutrition, um, being able to eat and do some things that way, uh, and then just. If anybody comes to one of our matches and sees 4,000 lunatic fans in the field house, <laughs> that's unmatched anywhere else in volleyball. And, uh, and so that's the thing. I think that, you know, the recruiting conversations start there. You know, what kind of experience do you want? And, uh, and you know, and then just I feel like, you know, our coaching staff helps guys get better and that we train at a really high level and that uh, – that you'll come in and you'll leave BYU as a much, much better volleyball player and a much better athlete than when you entered. Chris McGowan, the men's volleyball head coach, is on BYU Sports Nation. Let's talk about Saturday. Uh, tough loss to USC uh, in five in the MPSF quarterfinal, uh, ending the season at large, uh, you know, probably not going to happen. Uh, what was your takeaway now that it's been a couple days since that game? You know, people, a lot of friends called and just how you feeling. And ultimately, you know, I kind of just said, you know, I'm feeling good. We, uh, we, there was one weekend I thought all season long where we really got it, where we really played poorly and we just, we didn't come prepared and we didn't have a good mindset. And that was at Stanford. And it, in our defense, Stanford put together that lineup that they played against us once during the year. They had their full complement of guys, and, and they all played really well once, one weekend during the year, and it was the weekend we went out there. The rest of the time, Shaw was either uh, hurt or, you know, at 50% or something. And so when you have an All-American setter in, uh, it changes things a little bit. But that was the one weekend where I felt like, you know, our team just, we didn't play at the level we could. The rest of the time, we battled all season long. And, uh, and we had some nice wins, and we had some losses where we were in it the whole time. And so I felt good about the season overall. Saturday, uh, you know, we, we gave ourselves chances, and we didn't play well. 
we weren't as sharp as I would have liked us to have been. Um, you know, and, and looking back, I don't think there were things that we missed as a staff preparing our guys. I thought the game plan was spot on. I thought our preparation in the week prior to coming into the match was good. Our routines were good. Um, everything about the way we prepared was the right way. Uh, we just weren't playing great, and USC was playing pretty good. And we lost the serve-receive battle um, badly. Um, you know, maybe a 20% loss, which is huge. And we were still able to compete. And in that fourth set, we were basically done and made this great comeback and, uh, and had chances in the fifth, you know. And so we didn't play great, but through it all, our guys absolutely battled. They played their hearts out the entire time. And as a coach, that's, you know, sometimes you're just not sharp. And all you can ask for is this wonderful effort and just give everything you have. And, uh, and I thought our guys did that. And, uh, and so I was proud of the effort for sure. It would have been nice to have played uh, a little bit better. But um, we, we absolutely battled the whole time. And um, it's a good USC team, you know. And uh, it's hard to play on the road in our conference. We talk about it all the time. Teams are good in their own gyms. And it's hard to go on the road and, uh, and win. And, uh, you know, we, we took it down to the wire. Like we said, had chances in the fifth and just couldn't quite execute. I don't catch too many games on the road, but I went down to that one. I thought the I thought the BYU fans were fantastic. I thought they really lifted the team in the fourth set. Yeah, and you know there was there were a couple points in time when I looked around and I thought this is an amazing crowd for uh, a road match um, quarterfinal. You know, and uh, South Central LA, South all Central BYU yeah, fans show up and rolled out to the Galen Center, and it was a great, great crowd. And they were our guys. Our crowd was every bit as loud as uh, as the SC crowd, and. Uh, that's one of the other neat things about going on the road with BYU is we just have this built-in following, and um, our volleyball fans are phenomenal. That's something that I love as a player, uh, being on the road, uh, and even some of the smaller schools to kind of just laugh at the at the other school and, and be like, <laughs> oh, we got more fans than you. Yeah. This is your home, <laughs> your home court. So that was always a cool experience. Uh, Coach, now that the, the season is over, um, take us through uh, preparing for the off season. What are your, your next steps? So, yeah, in the locker room after the match, I told the guys, I thought, you know, this was a, a wonderful year, and I liked the way that we practiced every day. And the, the kind of ethic of the team was we're just we're working hard every day and we're trying to get better every day. And I thought the guys bought into that, and the, I thought that was really kind of the mentality they brought to practice is, hey, let's get a little better today. And uh, I thought that showed over the course of the year that, you know, we improved uh, as a team and did things better. And we're pretty strategic about how we went about training and, hey, we're weak here, let's get better and worked on some of those weaknesses and did a good job there. But then the other thing I told them was I said, this team uh, is going to be, is, there are great expectations for this group going forward. And I would, I'd be surprised if we weren't, you know, in the top three uh, ranked teams starting next year, which of course means nothing other than just, you know, people regard you kind of highly. And uh, we got a, a, a whole you know, crew of guys coming back and some guys that were injured that are going to play big roles for us and some, uh, you know, some guys that are coming off missions that are going to, you know, be important for us. And so it's going to be remarkably competitive in our gym, um, you know, to, to have, you know, to find a place on the court. And so the message to the guys was I said, you know, you have to work in this off season in a way that's commensurate with the expectations of this team. And, uh, and I said, don't come back to me after four months of vacation. <laughs> come back to me after four months of, of working at a level that this group deserves. This is, you know, you're going to have a unique opportunity the next two or three seasons. Work at a level that this that that opportunity deserves. That's and, what we tell uh, Spencer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Brian's anxious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, and so and – so, I'm hoping that, you know, that that message goes through. And we talked, the other thing we talked about is just, uh, you know, when you lose a big match and kind of you're left with this offseason feeling, I think it's easy in the first few weeks to go, you know what, I'm going to be great. I'm going to do a good job and uh, and just kind of have this initial energy that carries you through the first couple of weeks. And yeah. then summer sets in and, it, you know, I think that it's easy for that energy to wane. And so one of the other big messages for our guys is just, you know, habituate championship behavior. And just make that part of your routine, make that part of your ritual. And so we're doing some things to kind of help them get into habits of what we think, you know, are championship habits. And uh, so that when the when the kind of 
the sting of losing wears off your your you know dedication to your craft doesn't go away as well that 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 you know i'm still working towards something because i've habituated all these great great behaviors and so that's been the message for our guys we're gonna be really really good next year and uh and it's all a function of how hard we decide we want to work head coach chris mcgowan of the men's volleyball team is on BYU sports nation uh, you alluded to, you know, guys coming off missions, missions. Ben Patch uh, was at the match. He's been training with Team USA in Anaheim. How much better do you expect him to be with, I guess, uh, you know, training with Team USA when he comes back in the fall? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, of all the scenarios that could have played out, coming back from a mission and going straight into that gym is about as good as we could have hoped for in terms of training quality. And they he- ask that he... Yeah, go down there, he, right? he was he can't down, just show up. He was like, down there by <laughs> down there by invitation, and uh, and the coaching staff has been really really great about working with him, and uh, about getting him back. And uh, if nothing else, they they tell me that his fitness and his strength is coming back in a hurry. That he's close to touching back, you know, twelve feet, and uh, which is you know people go oh, twelve feet. You know, if you think about that, it's it's a massive amount he's slapping uh, he, the he, top of the yeah. backboard yeah not the he, top but he, up there yeah he's getting over the top of the square you know yeah. and uh it's he so he's he's getting off the floor and just you know getting a lot of touches and uh a lot of high quality reps and he's gonna go play we hope on a pan am cup team and so he's gonna get some match experience this summer internationally and uh, you know in terms of just what you would expect from a normal return missionary he's gonna be way ahead of that so uh so it's great. And, yeah. and Langlois, I guess, training with USA. Brendan Sander got a U21 invite. Yep, Brendan Sander with a JNT. Um, he actually got two invites. He could have gone to the University World University Games or the JNT. We thought the JNT was a better the fit. Ju- junior team. Junior national team, yeah, was a little bit better fit for him just because the, the training was going to be more prolonged. And then there was an opportunity, if they do well at the tournament uh, in Canada, to go on to some world championship stuff in September. And so just – more reps and the, and the level was going to be pretty high for him. And uh, I, I like the group of coaches that are training that team. I think they'll do a really good job with him and, uh, and ask a lot of him. And that was the other thing is, is he's an integral part of that junior national team lineup. And so there's going to be a lot demanded of him. Mm-hmm. And we like when, uh, when those guys are put <laughs> in a position where a lot's demanded of them. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we appreciate the time. Congrats on the season. I, I took a friend down to LA. He said, I'm getting season tickets next year. I went to a couple, but I'm getting season tickets now, so he's hooked. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's the experience that most of the people that we talk to, they'll come to a volleyball match, and, and they'll, we'll, they'll tell me after the match, I had no idea <laughs> yeah. that this is what volleyball could be like, yeah. and, uh, and they get hooked when they go, yeah. it's awesome. Okay, thanks for the time. Good luck in the My pleasure. Thanks, yeah, coach. great to see you guys.